Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options. And this is the morning market prep video for April 7th, 2020. Yesterday, my goodness, my goodness, the bulls got their act together really rallying hard yesterday, just a relentless push to the upside as there was a little bit of warm and fuzzy um, in the news yesterday that the virus um, infection rate may be starting to flatten and health officials are even um, talking about that a little bit this morning that we may be starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel but what does that mean for the market let's um, settle in let's grab ourselves something to drink and let's prepare for the Tuesday edition of the morning market prep video so this morning we have, um, unfortunately, another major gap up. And, and the reason I say unfortunately is these big wild gaps leave a lot of traders behind. As a matter of fact, what they it, it also creates is this um, general sense of fear of missing out. So yesterday we get an 800 point gap up. We're getting another one of those uh, this morning, which means that, you know, in just two days we have moved nearly 3,000 points here in the Dow. That puts us in a situation where if we chase into that trade, it makes for a very dangerous situation should the market decide to reverse or if there's profit taking that comes into the market. It puts us at a a pretty dangerous situation um, based on where our risk or our stop loss might be in a trade so these gaps like this are unfortunate and it makes it very very difficult for the retail trader to um, get involved without just wildly chasing uh, these bullish moves now that doesn't mean that you can't trade intraday there are inter good intraday setups out there and we'll take a look at some of those later on but we've got to be really really careful because we have to remember after a 3,000 point rally in just two days the possibility that there are going to be folks out there saying hey that's enough I'm taking profits and we see the possibility of a reversal so kind of keep that in mind it's a frustrating thing when we have this all-or-nothing market we just whip back and forth and it does make it very dangerous and I understand how frustrating that is for a lot of folks it's frustrating for me because I am a real stickler about sticking to my discipline and my rules and my trading plan and the last thing I want to do is chase high-risk trades so just keep that in mind as we take a look at some of the technicals here in this chart now one of the positive signs that we have going on here first off we have now officially a higher low in the market and yesterday we officially broke the downtrend here in the diamonds the gap up this morning just pushes us up into more resistance in the chart and you can see i'm going to move a line here but you can see gapping up into this area and i'm going to pull this back pushing us right up into a major price resistance here in the chart that's one of the reasons why I'm cautioning folks to be really really careful about chasing in this morning or uh, being caught up in that fear of missing out because we really could be reaching up into that area where sellers start coming in um, this morning so watch that carefully but Pushing up into that resistance level in the chart, if we take a look at our averages, you can see we're pushing up there around that 34 EMA, which is a, a rebound area that is fairly common um, in the market, and we can see um, that become a little bit of a price resistance point. However, with the wild bullishness that we see in the market, is it possible we blast right on through there and continue higher? And I gotta say yes, there is that certain possibility of that even as the 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 numbers continue to rise and our death toll uh, will easily go over 11,000 today and we may even reach 375,000 infections here in the United States we still have a long road ahead of us so be really careful in thinking that the all clear has been sounded remember we have um um, earnings just around the corner and I just can't imagine we're going to start getting a lot of good earnings so there will be those out there thinking hey I got this really nice quick move up now I'm going to start taking profits and that's something to think about and it may not happen today but 
um, and just kind of consider that, that there may be some profit takers out there getting ready to pull the trigger on trades. But beautiful upside move here. Uh, sad that we're gapping up and it's leaving these two great big gaps up, leaving a lot of retail traders behind um, on that move. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY also gapping up this morning and i'll just take this line and we'll move it right up here to where we're meant to gap up this morning and notice that we are gapping right up into a significant level of price resistance so here again spy gapping up into that price resistance in the chart um, substantial move higher in two days um, be careful um, the last thing we want to do is chase into this and get caught um, in that gap and see that reversal coming in and once again we're up there by that 34 EMA so watch that pretty closely here this morning notice that our 50-day moving average is continuing to dive uh, may easily be down below that 500-day moving average uh, by Friday so just keep that in mind there's still massive technical damage in these charts and as we head into earnings um, who knows what's actually going to happen just just be careful not to chase or take um, crazy wild um, risk in this market with us moving so quickly and so violently let's take a look at uh, the queues QQQ QQQ moving up sharply here this morning and this is actually going to be breaking out now the Nasdaq has been the strongest index of the band bunch by far holding above its 500 day moving average and you can see it is rallying and may try to break through its 200 day moving average today and once again we're going to be hitting into some resistance areas here in the chart notice that our 50 day moving average is still declining quite sharply and may create that resistance point here um, in this chart so watch that carefully if um, we happen to pop up there and pull back um, we could set up a nice range of trading here and the queues um, doing much much better than the other indexes uh, by far the damage to those was substantially more than we're seeing here in the Nasdaq let's take a look at IWM IWM um, rallied yesterday significantly but you can see still has a long ways to go before this actually um, shows the kind of recovery that we're seeing in the other indexes um, gapping up this morning and you can see we still have the resistance of last week's high that we will not defeat this morning um, in at least in the gap we may rally on through that later on during the day but certainly uh, massive damage here and could be that warning that you you know, IWM is still kind of serving as that boat anchor that we're kind of dragging along here um, on these lows. So watch that close. Let's take a look at the VIX. That VIX is finally getting a little bit of relief and pulling back. Um, we may approach this 50 day moving average here on the VIX here soon and we're pulling back into those 40 handles which is a nice sign we're starting to see some of those options begin to calm down a little bit and they're still very wide bid ask for spreads and very expensive options but it is nice to see that we're settling in here just a bit but with that in mind just remember the more we pull back on this the higher probability that we get another bounce or escalation of that if those uh, profit taking sellers come in i think it would be pretty unwise to believe that we're going to see a v bottom pattern in this market with the impacts that we're going to experience um, in employment and all the different things across there even the sba yesterday was struggling heavily trying to um, keep up on their computers and stuff with uh, so many applications coming in for business loans trying to hold on um, in this period of time lots of things happening here lots of impacts and just remember our debt levels are now skyrocketing there's a lot of things that could impede us from just zooming straight back up so kind of keep that in mind and 
um, and make sure you're staying very, very focused to price action and not just trading emotionally. Let's take a look at T2122. T2122 is the four week new high, new low ratio. And you can see um, yesterday we just shot straight up and this morning the gap up means that we've kind of gone from a bullish reversal zone. We could easily be up here in the bearish reversal zone just um, you know at the open, those two quick days. Um, extreme rally that's where we want to watch for that possibility of that little bit of a pullback some profit taking those kind of things in the market so be careful not getting caught up in that fear of missing out and rushing in this morning into a trade right it might just be that big old trap that catches you in there and sellers come back into the market so watch that carefully this morning and just really stay focused on that price action in the discipline of your trading plan let's take a look at our economic calendar for today and our economic calendar has a couple things that we want to pay attention to here this morning as you can see we have the um, jots report here this morning um, job openings report who knows where that's going to come in if that's even uh, factored in all the different impacts around this but we'll want to keep an eye on that um, this morning it's not one of those major market moving reports but one we'll want to pay attention to and then remember it's actually fairly common now this market is a long ways from being common but um, it's actually fairly common that the market would then uh, would possibly calm as we head into the FOMC. The FOMC minutes release at 2 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, it's a fairly common thing that the market just becomes light and choppy ahead of that. Now that may not be the situation today because of such tremendous emotion and such technical damage in these charts, but just kind of keep that in mind um, that that is coming along uh, for tomorrow. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar. Now, now our earnings calendar is pretty light uh, this week as we kind of uh, do all the cleanup and stuff of last quarter and we start to begin uh, the next quarter of earnings because remember next week we start moving into another earnings season and I don't think anyone is expecting those numbers to be um, too good. Um, it's possible that there's going to be some tech companies out there and things like that that could be very good but remember we're going to start out with the big banks and we know that the banks are could, could struggle just a little bit here um, in those reports. So we'll want to kind of keep that in mind as we move forward. But today we've got just over 20 companies reporting earnings and um, none of them are uh, the kind of uh, companies that would be um, really market moving. But uh, two of them I pulled out as, as kind of notable. C-O-N-N -N is reporting this morning. Um, little tiny stock. Um, obviously in a downtrend could possibly be forming a double bottom pattern here so watch this earnings report there may be an opportunity here if that can come up but this retail um, wouldn't exactly be a big market mover overall but a bit notable here on the day and the other one would be levi Levi's um, obviously very, very beat up in this market. They're gapping up this morning on their report, I'm trying to move up here. Clearly still in a downtrend. There may be a value play in this move, but obviously an awful lot of work um, needs to occur for this to really, really recover. So pretty ugly stuff out there still that we have to deal with in this market. And those are the only two that I could really come up with that were you know somewhat notable on the day so with that let's take a look at some of the stocks that could be setting up and places that you might look for some potential trades but before we do if you guys wouldn't mind if I could ask you for a favor if you find these videos to be helpful where um, hopefully you've noticed that these videos um, 
Um, I, I try to stay away from all of the hype and all of the drama and really look at the technicals of the chart and kind of think about the things that could affect the market for today. And if that helps you in how you approach the market for the day, if you could do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. Um, and if you feel the video is worthy, if you could please click that thumbs up button and leave a brief comment, that helps a lot in us continuing to go to grow. I apologize, I've been so busy the last few days, I haven't been able to answer many of those comments, but I will try to get to some of those today. So um, please feel free to do that and ask those questions if there's something I can help with. So with that, Let's take a look at a few stocks that are showing some pretty decent signs, some things that we might want to keep an eye on. One that I, uh, you know, the the China area where they're starting to to show that recovery pretty well, might want to take a look at stocks like JD. Now JD is uh, one of those online retailers. And you can see JD is trying to break higher here. We've had this move up. We're trying to hold a little platform here of support. Watch this area here. JD is trying to improve. And on the same uh, uh, same course of thought, take a look at Baba. Baba had a big day yesterday, rallying up strongly trying to break its downtrend, putting in that little higher low. Now, if this can rest, pull back, consolidate in here, hold, you can see it's looking to gap up this morning, but any pullback or rest in here may set up that opportunity for that next move higher. And Alibaba uh, may be one of those places that may uh, gain some benefit on the recovery here. So keep a close eye on that. Another place that I think could be really interesting, and, and as a matter of fact, I started buying up a position um, and I'm just buying a stock position right now is in energy um, XLE I started buying this up yesterday um, with the idea that there's likely going to be a deal between um, you know with OPEC and Russia and they're gonna cut production and we kind of got some news on that yesterday right before the close and you can see um, that is starting to move up I, I can't imagine that energy is going to stay this low forever now we could still see more back and forth in this and the reason I'm I'm buying this up is with the idea of holding this for a period of time um, on this I, this isn't going to be likely going to be a really quick trade for me this is going to be one of those that I want to hold for the recovery of the market and energy prices I think are one that we can probably expect to recover even though it's probably going to be a, a long road for recovery we're not going to see all of the airplanes and cruise ships and travel around the country and everything else just zoom right back to uh, normal because we still have uh, no vaccine for the coronavirus and this is going to continue to affect us for a long period of time so keep that in mind, we've got a long road ahead of us here on that recovery. This is going to take some time and that's why I wanna hold this for a period of time and why I'm starting to build a position here. Another way that you could look at this, um, you could also just kind of take a look at the stocks that make up that company if you wanna have a particular stock rather than an ETF. The reason I chose the stock or the ETF on this is because I wanna avoid the volatility on the individual stocks for this next round of earnings coming up. And in here, I don't have to suffer quite so much volatility as you can see in XLE, I'm actually holding 27 companies. So there will be some volatility, but it's not like I'll be holding that individual volatility in those trades. Now, another place you might want to look is things that, um, might come up in like consumer staples and as you can see consumer staples making that rally back and we're trying to break through those downtrends we're trying to hold um, the staples are things that we're obviously going to need now I don't want to chase this move but I do want to start picking up some of the stocks here in the in the staples because I do expect them to come rallying back uh, pretty strongly when we do start recovering and that may be a while so don't be too surprised if this bounce bounces around in here. And remember again, this is going to be one of those diversified trades. There's 33 companies 
that make this up. You know, Coke and Tyson and those kind of things, Walmart, the kind of companies that we know are going to stick around for a long, long time probably not going to go anywhere. They have some recovery to do, but it may be an opportunity to pick up um, some of the trade in here. Now, one thing I would want to caution you against is being careful about holding anything long-term in options right now. The implied volatility is extremely high in these options. And as we rally, we can expect that implied volatility to crush meaning that you could be exactly right on direction and still have a very difficult time or even lose money um, when that volatility um, uh, starts to collapse. So be really careful. Think about maybe buying up some of the shares of these things, e either in the ETF or the individual stocks, might be a, a, a way to take advantage of that recovery. Now, I did a thing with our trading group the other day, and you guys can take a look at this if, if you want, but we actually put together just a longer term portfolio, and I just did a, a scenario here of uh, $10,000 of our of our portfolio and just picking up um, a mixed bag of ETFs and different things in here. And as of um, yesterday around noon, this was up $472 and we've only been in this uh, four days. I think 472. So you can see by picking up some of these things in this recovery and actually buying the stock itself with a portion of your um, overall trading portfolio, you could really take advantage of this recovery. Now, real quickly on some stocks that you might want to look, there are intraday type trades that could easily be made. Um, yesterday I, re I mentioned Nvidia as a possibility, and Nvidia took off nicely yesterday. But I want to jump into a a shorter term chart here real quick and notice that there were um, intraday possibilities so please feel free if if you have the ability to trade those quicker intraday charts there's plenty of opportunity to trade in those uh, positions just remember that there are tax consequences if you're trading outside of a um, um, qualified account, you may want to look into those tax consequences, just having to record every single one of those trades in your taxes. So think about that, but there are some recovery things going on um, overall. And some of the tax seem to be doing very well and may be a place to look. So another place that you might want to consider in uh, recovery would be something like um, SMH, maybe SMH. Um, uh, beautiful, beautiful ETF starting to rally up here. Nice move today. So any rest or pullback now sets up a nice opportunity and that possible trend to the upside. And you can see that that holds 25 companies. Another another one might be XLK. XLK, there's that great little pattern starting to show up here. And once again, this holds 71 companies. And you can even get dividend payments on these and just by picking up some of this recovery. So hopefully you found that to be helpful. Everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great profits. Be really careful today chasing this gap up open. Watch for that potential of some profit taking coming in at any time. And I'll um, see you all right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a great day.